Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon. My name is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and you are watching Headlines You May Have Missed. If you'd like to see the show notes, you can go to isheadlines.com and get access to the show notes of this show and other shows as well. If you're new to the show, this format is we look at the headlines that you may have missed, and we try and see how many headlines can we get to in the course of 20 minutes. Now on Fridays, what we're going to end up doing, which we're going to do for this show, is the headlines are going to start with the top five stories in terms of popularity on my on our website, iState.tv, from last Friday to Thursday. So I'm not going to count the stories today because I haven't had time to live to see what kind of traffic they're going to get. So Friday through Thursday, top five stories is what we'll be covering. And uh, this is, uh, the date is uh, Friday, January 19th, 2018. And the title of this episode is How to Become a Police State Informant in One Easy Vote. And that's our top headline, but we won't get to that top headline first because we're actually going to get to the top five stories of the week before we actually get to the headlines for today. So we're going to begin the 20 minute countdown, right? Oh, let me make sure I got the first story crewed up and here we go. All right. Our top five stories of the past week from January 12th to January 18th, 2018. Coming in at number five, dark energy is a material that would change physics forever. A theoretical possibility involving the decreasing uncertainty of measuring constants constants could point to a new as of yet not understood material that could shake up human understanding of the laws of physics and explain the so-called dark energy of the universe you'll have to go to the show page page to read more our number four story is ai makes music and here is the video you know i want to Oh, I can't play the video. I don't have the audio input uh, uh, play. Well, again, you're going to have to go to isheadlines.com or you can you get the show notes if you're watching on Facebook in the description above or if you're watching on YouTube in the description below. So, ear-worn melodies with strange aspects. What happens when AI makes music? The first full-length mainstream music album co-written with the help of artificial intelligence was released on 12 January, and expert believe, experts believe that the science behind it could lead to a whole new style of music composition. Again, you'll have to go to isheadlines.com, get the show notes, and then you get access to that video. And I promise next week I'm going to make sure that I have this program so I can have uh, audio uh, coming from my computer. Our number three story, Germany's central bank calls on world laws to combat Bitcoin. So Germany's central bank has pointed out that efforts by individual nation states to regulate Bitcoin are hampered because their, quote, citizens, unquote, can always find ways to access Bitcoin through portals in countries where Bitcoin is not regulated. The bank's answer is that there needs to be a worldwide regulation on what they are calling virtual currencies. Choosing the word virtual is not an accident. It's a discrediting, invalidating word chosen to send a subliminal message that cryptocurrencies are not real currencies. I just want to say that they're no real or no less than your fiat currencies. So uh, number two story for last week, this past week, using the blockchain to gain consent for sex. It's happening. Yes, I used the Ron Paul mean thing for that. You have to. You really have to. So you may soon be able to use the blockchain to formally consent to sex. Dutch startup Legal Things announced Wednesday it plans to release an app designed to allow people to more easily give explicit and formal consent to sex. Through an easy-to-use interface, couples or groups will be able to use the app dubbed Legal Fling 
to enter into binding contracts that are recorded on a blockchain, the digital ledger technology that's designed to save permanent records of transactions in multiple places. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the number one story for the week of January 12th to January 18th. Give us a little, you know what? Maybe next time I'll have like a little musical assist here, like a drum roll or something. I don't have it this week. So here we go. The number one story. EU ponders how to regulate the Internet of Things. And I tell you, I would not have guessed that that would have been the top story of the week. But there you go. The people have spoken. Internet of Things, the EU gears up on the approach to standard essential patents. In its new communication dated 29 November 2017, the commission sets out EU's approach to SEPs and outlines some key principles that foster a balanced, smooth, and predictable framework for SEPs. The aim is to incentivize the development and inclusion of top technologies and standards by preserving fair and adequate return for these contributions, blah, 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 blah. You'll, again, have to go to isheadlines.com to, to read, read the full pondering there. But, but in essence, they're trying to figure a way to get on top of new technology in a way that does not allow individuals and free associations to assume too much uh, self-reliance and or anonymity. These are the things that they're always guarding against. And now we're going to get to the stories for today. And here is our top story for the day. And this is where we get our title from. And it's going to be a little ranty because this, this story kind of ticks me off. New York. Now, you'll, I, I, want to, I want you to pay attention to how I write the story and how media writes the story. What I try to do on iState, especially, especially for stories like this, is, is de-civilize it to strip away all the nice, polite, sterilizing speech and boil it down to its raw, naked vulgarity. In a story like this, you should come face to face, if, if you're a person who supports this, you should come face to face with the vulgarity, subjective term, I know, but my term, my, my, I would call this vulgarity. You should come face to face with the vulgarity that you're supporting. New York neighbors to turn in dangerous people for gun removal. So a group of wannabe dictators by committee got together in Albany this past Wednesday, January 18th to push a new gun grabber strategy, one that has already been implied and we covered in a Washington state. So the strategy is to appeal to the fear of the, fear of the powerless, the people who have long ago abdicated their own responsibility to provide for their own basic defense and imagining somehow that the state, which is always only seven minutes away from any potential assault scene, will, will get there on time. So it goes something like this. Really dangerous people have access to guns and they could potentially hurt you because they have guns. Now, they haven't actually done anything wrong yet. We don't have any laws that uh, currently allow us to take their guns. But that doesn't mean that they should have guns. I mean, they're probably going to hurt you and we can't really protect you because we're seven minutes away from the scene of an ongoing attack that is usually over in 10 minutes, two minutes or less. Whoa, hold on. Probably shouldn't have said that last part. Now there's, there's more of the rant, which you can find in the show notes, which are linked uh, in Facebook above and in YouTube below. A coalition, uh, well, uh, uh, so this is the New York Daily News and how they're they're writing this. A coalition of influential gun control advocates joined forces Wednesday to call for legislation that would make it easier to keep guns away from dangerous individuals. You hear the sterilization there? The group urged state lawmakers to adopt legislation that would allow judges to temporarily prohibit individuals considered likely to harm themselves or others from possessing or purchasing firearms. No, no, I'm never writing a story like this with that polite little language. But we'll move on. 
Our next headline is with approvals below 30%. Congress has approvals, I don't know, somewhere between 15 and 30%. I haven't seen it higher than 30. And I think I've seen it as low as 12. I'm not sure. So with, with those abysmally low approvals, only 10% of U.S. House races are actually competitive. So according to scottrasmussen.com, of the 435 U.S. House races scheduled to be decided later this year, just 45 of the races are actually competitive, about 10%. Now, just take that in, folks. And this figure, it's, it's actually right on average, and it reflects the overall reality that once a politician gets in office, they stay in office. So I'll just say, I'll just add this if if you still think that you live in an actual republican democracy where congress has an approval rating below 30 percent but yet 90 percent of its incumbents come back for the next term well i have a bridge to sell you in brooklyn because you know what i can already tell you're an easy sell we'll get to our next headline which is brits reject losing their eu overlords polls suggests and uh, now I've, I've, I've talked before about polls. Sometimes polls are an uh, authentic indicator of an aggregate viewpoint within a targeted group that's being measured. And sometimes polls are designed to nudge a target group towards a desired aggregate view. I'm not sure what this is. But either way, the release of this poll indicates that the owners and managers of both the British nation state and the European Union are working on undoing what the voting population of Britain indicated they wanted done on June 23, 2016. And the lesson that you can call from what you see emerging with Brexit is this. The coercive mob monopolies and their supporters will never, ever relent in continuously working to manipulate the aggregate of their controlled population to either accept or or even more ideally demand greater controls by central authority and uh, the, the the poll in essence shows that 45 percent said that britain would vote to remain in the eu as opposed to 35 percent who said Britain would again vote to leave, and among all decided voters, Remain now has a predicted 12-point lead of 56% to 44%. Again, with the caveat being that this poll could be designed as, as, as a push of, of a desired aggregate view, and maybe not necessarily a reflection of an actual aggregate view, but who knows. Our next headline... 3D print your prescription drugs from home. I love this story. I hope the, I hope this makes this in the top five next week. I don't know if it will, but I sure hope it does. Exciting work done by a team out of the University of Glasgow promises to deliver 3D printed drugs to your home. And uh, they promise to deliver the device that could enable you to print your own prescription drugs in your home. Now, the article, which I'm not going to quote from in, in, in headlines you may have missed right now, but the article doesn't really cover the, the next part, the, the, the perspective that I'm going to share now. For me, the ramifications for this are powerful and could go well beyond, quote, prescription drugs. Uh, imagine, if you will, a device that could be used to anonymously print experimental drugs for people, drugs the FDA has not approved of. This emerging drug print tech is yet another powerful tool and the arsenal of those who wish to see the balance of power tilt from coercive associations towards individuals and free associations. I can see from this tool as it spreads and it becomes more widely used, and I don't mean extensively, I don't know how extensively it'll be used, but, but as it becomes more widely used, I can see the emergence of open source medicine. And, and I look forward to that day. Although, you know, if you're going to have open source medicine, it's going to be enter at your own risk. Okay, the next headline, Dubai to use nanotechnology to fight fires. So Dubai is preparing to use nanotechnology to combat fires 
and they boldly proclaim that fires will no longer be a problem thanks to the use of this technology. And I'm going to read a little bit here from The National. That's the website. And their headline is, To buy civil defense to eradicate fire threat with nanotechnology. Fires across Dubai will soon be a thing of the past, according to the Emirates Civil Defense, who are working on implementing nanotechnology in commercial buildings to prevent disasters. Speaking at a press conference on the details of the Intersec event, which kiss off, kicks off, kiss off, <laughs> kiss off, I like that. Okay, which kicks off in Dubai next week, Breg Rashid Buflasa, director, General Assistant for Fire and Rescue at the Dubai Civil Defense, said he hoped their new technology would be implemented in time for Expo 2020. The technology is based around a material that is comprised of a solid layer with moisture built inside. So when the solid begins to melt in heat, it produces water vapor. The device will work by stifling the three elements needed to ignite a fire, heat, fuel, and oxygen and a, a politician talking there's i don't i hope that it eliminates that one as well he said according to our statistics most fires are electric like short circuits and poor connections we'll fix the nanotechnology inside the sockets starting with commercial buildings like malls and warehouses and eventually we'll go into residential buildings and fire will be done forever well you know fires that are out of control and burn buildings down will be done our next headline. We just move on, Paul. 5G begins to clarify as standards are finally released by 3GP. So 5G standards uh, have been released, and it's giving developers and ISPs a clear understanding of what it is and how to build around these standards. And this is from uh, All About Circuits. The Third Generation Partnership Project, 3GPP, recently released the first version of the 5G standard, finally providing hardware designers and telecommunication providers details to prepare for 5G-capable devices. Currently, if a company is boasting that it is offering 5G services, it is not really true. Most likely, they are offering simply a faster version of 4G. Up until recently, the definition of what 5G would be didn't exist. So if you're claiming to be 5G and it doesn't really clearly exist, that's probably an indication that you're not actually 5G. Like all other technology, the 5G standard is an adjustment to the changing and growing technology landscape. The need for greater bandwidth and capacity less latency and reliability. How much bandwidth do we want? MOA. How much capacity do we want? MOA. How much latency do we want? Less. How much reliability do we want? MOA. And the answer is always the same. Now, to be fair, the standard isn't quite complete yet. The current version still requires the use of LTE networks for various features. The complete standalone version is expected to release be released in June of this year. And adoption of the standard isn't expected to begin until 2019. So this follows the current trend of a new G standard being released every 10 years. And then our next headline. Oh, this one's this one's a, a Lozilla one. Uh, definitely a Lozilla one. Uh, I gotta I gotta I gotta do this one carefully. Uh, really carefully. Uh, I'm just covering the story, folks, here. Don't judge me. So, spike in adult online video views after Hawaii's fake missile alert. So, picture, if you will, front. You've been confronted with a near-death experience. You get the text, we're all going to die. And that's pretty much what that, that fake missile alert uh, was. It was a message. We're all going to die. Uh, now, will, would they have all have died if a ballistic missile attacked? I'm not going to get into all that. I don't want to ruin Lozilla with the facts. So if you're Hawaiian, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to go to your favorite site for a little 
adult online video entertainment afterwards. That's right. After you've been confronted with a near-death experience, your your next thought is, "Hey, I haven't been to I haven't been to Pornhub in a while." probably just before the alert. So at least that's what the numbers released by Pornhub seem to indicate, which saw a dip in views during the fake missile alert. So they dropped 77% from their normal Saturday Hawaii Tropic. Now, they're not, not 100%, 77%. So that meant that there was a fair amount of folks that stayed with it, so to speak. So... Uh, on the flip side, after the alert was done, after it was revealed that it was fake, then all of a sudden Pornhub, they didn't go back to their normal level. No, no, no. They actually had a peak in viewership. Their viewership compared to average Saturdays from Hawaii increased by 48%. So there's just a couple of questions from all of this for me. One, who are the Hawaiians that continue to peruse the adult online videos during the fake missile crisis? And two, who, uh, when going through what amounts to a near-death experience, thinks to themselves, well, I guess I'm not going to die. I guess I'm going to go watch porn now. Hawaiians, that's messed up, man. That is, that is seriously messed up. And now here's a few headlines that we didn't get to. New approach to fighting cancer involves 3D printing extra tumors. Supreme Court blocks redraw of North Carolina congressional maps. Connecticut Supreme Court overturns sweeping education ruling. World has responsibility to people of Afrin, says Syrian Kurds. U.S. deploys six nuclear-capable bombers to Guam. And finally, Ukraine government's dilemma how to retain IMF aid without fighting corruption. And then you'll have to go to, you can go to the show notes. If you're watching Facebook, the show notes are listed in the description. And if you're watching YouTube, the show notes are listed in the description. And if that's too difficult for you, just punch in isheadlines.com and you will see the show notes for the show, how to become a police state informant in one easy vote. Right now, as of this show, it's, it's the top story. And that's it. That's it for headlines you may have missed from iState.tv. There's, uh, uh, t I'll be back for headlines that you may have missed on my personal Paul Gordon Facebook page here. And uh, I will also be back on Monday night. Professor Rambo will be with me for his daily Monday. We'll be doing full auto, which is guns. We'll be doing iWorld, which is maybe world news that not a lot of folks are talking about. And we'll end with a little iPrepper. And we got some really interesting uh, prepper stuff to talk about on the show. And that's a Monday, eh, somewhere around a little bit after, between 9 and 9.30 p.m. I can't give a definitive time because of Professor Rambo's schedule and how he does things. But no later than 9.30 p.m., no earlier than 9 p.m. And that's on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. Now, as for me, I'm going to be heading on over to the Sovereignty uh, Sovereignty Network Facebook page. I will be listening to Kurt Walker Jr. and uh, Crypto Corner Live. If you're involved in crypto, I encourage you to go over and join me. And if you do end up finding your way over there, just just put it in the comment that uh, uh, I state sent sent you, just so Kurt knows. That's it. I know Kurt is not, not, he's not a sponsor of the show. I just really like the show. I think it's a cool show for a lot of folks to watch who maybe don't know a lot about crypto. They're kind of learning it like me. It's uh, very informative. And on that note, I will end with this. This is, this is my call. This is my, my sign off. Uh, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. I'll see you Monday night or Monday afternoon, 12.30 p.m. Same bat time, same bat channel. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv. Have yourself a great afternoon.